Okay, well, hi, everyone. Welcome to our all day movie workshop. And uh, also we have friends here from our um, Awakening from the Dream online retreat, experiencing the heart of God. So we have those just for the movie and those on our retreat as well. And um, for those who are new, I'm Peter. I'm going to be the host. And uh, I can run through just the flow of the day. So we'll start with the movie um, from David. And um, then afterwards, we're going to have um, a breakout room session where you can share about what came up for you during the movie. And then finally, we'll have a closing session where we can go a bit deeper uh, with David about anything that came up and a couple of breaks in between. So um, I'll just pass it over to you now, David. Thank you, Peter. Hi, everyone. Welcome. Oh, wow. We're in for a treat today. We're taking, we're going way, way, way down the rabbit hole today. <laughs> so hold on to your carpet today on this carpet ride because we're going to the bottom. We're going to the bottom of the rabbit hole. Today, I'm going to dispel all the mysteries of time and space and the, and the world. Today's teaching is for all the planets in all the universes and all the galaxies. This is for aliens. ET, I hope you're watching and you're tuning in with your, your cute little friends because this will take you beyond the concerns of time and space if you're ready. It's like, are you ready to go with me today? Because we're the whole universe of time and space is going bye bye. <laughs> we're we're going, we're zooming towards the holy instant today. So if you have ego resistance that comes up today, that's okay. Uh, stay for the breakout rooms and let up all your fears. Everybody who believes they're a human being thinks they're afraid of dying. That's not really the fear. You're not really afraid of dying. You're afraid of eternal life. You're afraid of the light. You're afraid of your true Christ self. And it's only because of the heavy investment in linear time. All of the great spiritual traditions, whether you talk about Jesus or Buddha, whether you talk about Lao Tzu, whether you talk about uh, Paramahansa Yogananda and all the modern day mystics and saints we have, the Byron Cadys, the Eckhart Tolle's, everybody is talking about the present moment. Be present. And anytime you hear those words, be present, something in your heart lights up. Something in your heart goes, oh wow, that's it. Now, the reason this is so is because the problem isn't death in form, the problem is the belief in death called the ego. The Christians just call it Satan. That's all right. You can call it anything. I like to call it error. <laughs> you can call it whatever you want. I call it error. Because an error not only can be corrected, but has been corrected already. So this is good news. This is, this is the glory of the resurrection of the mind, because Actually, the error has already been corrected. Jesus is Yeshua. I see Ephrat there. Yeshua, Jesus, they have shown us already that, that we are joy. We are pure, divine, agape love and nothing but. And yet, the belief in linear time is synonymous with death. If you believe in linear time, you do believe in death. You do believe the ego is real. So what we have learned from A Course in Miracles is the past is gone, the future is but imagined, and past and future are but concerns and defenses against present change of focus. The Holy Spirit is always calling us to a present change of focus. 
And everything that's believed about linear time is guilt. Everything without exception that involves the belief in linear time is guilt and nothing more. Now, today we're going to play a, a vibrational relationship movie that involves four couples. And the one thing you need to understand is there really aren't good or bad inter interpersonal relationships. There is no hierarchy of love. You may think that a couple that's been married for 50 years is on a different level from two people who just meet in a restaurant. <laughs> you might say, well, the, the couple that's been married for 50 years, they have a whole different experience than two people that meet for a moment in a restaurant. It's not so. Uh, to divinity, there's no hierarchy of relationships. There aren't good friends and best friends. There aren't uh, high spiritual relationships and low relationships. There aren't better connections with some and less connections. Some of you may think you have a, a closer relationship with your cat than your partner. But I'm telling you, love is, doesn't have different kinds. There aren't different levels of love. There's only one love, and that's the love of God. And Christ is an expression of that one love. So everyone's here for self-realization. Everyone's here to remember who you truly are. Now, in terms of this world, everyone who believes they're a human being has a soul sickness. Why? It's a longing for God. It's a longing for nirvana. It's a longing for heaven. It's a longing to go home. Everyone who seems to walk this world has a soul sickness. And what we have tried to do to, to answer this soul sickness is we've tried to deal with a substitute for love. We've tried to use interpersonal relationships to substitute for this soul sickness. We have searched for love in many faces. Believe me, if you could see your experience in time and space from a reincarnational perspective, you would be shocked at how long you've been trying to find this eternal love. You would, you would be shocked if you saw that the people that are around you now, you've been with them in thousands of different forms. And each time you come back to time and space and believe you reincarnate into time and space, it's just because you're afraid of the light. Who would reincarnate if they had eternal life? <laughs> Reincarnation would be the biggest joke. Why would you leave eternal life? You know, it's, it's actually impossible to leave the light. But everyone here in this world has a fear of intimacy. They, it's because they believe in private minds with private thoughts and private persons with private parts. <laughs> that's crazy. That's, that's absolutely ridiculous, but that's what guilt is about. If you believe in that, then you have guilt. It's an ontological guilt. It's a fear of the light. So first of all, before we go on this huge adventure together where you're just gonna have a smile on your face all day, uh, I just wanted to read a little bit from, from chapter 13 in A Course in Miracles. And the chapter is The Guiltless World. Does that sound good to you? The Guiltless World? I'm in. <laughs> I hope you'll join me in guiltlessness. You know, I'm in. And, and the section is called Finding the Present. Ooh, finding the present. Jesus Christ is talking about finding the present. I'm, I'm all ears. Listen closely because this will be very helpful today during this movie. Time can release as well as in prison, depending on whose interpretation of it you use. Past, present, and future are not continuous unless you force continuity on them. 
you can perceive them as continuous and make them so for you. But do not be deceived and then believe that this is how it is. For to believe reality is what you would have it be according to your use for it is delusional. You would destroy time's continuity by breaking it into past, present, and future for your own purposes. You would anticipate the future based on your past experience and plan for it according, accordingly. Yet by doing so, you are aligning the past and the future and not allowing the miracle which could intervene between them to free you to be born again. The miracle enables you to see your brother without his past and so perceive him as born again. What does that mean? It just means that if you would forgive, you have to overlook your brother and your sister's body and their private mind and their private thoughts. You have to realize that it's been a perceptual hallucination to believe in linear time that has brought about the guilt. God doesn't even know about linear time. God has no awareness of linear time. Eternity doesn't know of time because love can only look on itself. So Jesus tells us in the Course that time and eternity are both in your mind and will conflict until you want, until you see that the only purpose of time is to reach eternity. If you have any egoic purposes for time, that's going to keep you asleep. Anything that you think of that's judgmental, anything that you think of that breaks things apart into duality, the good, the bad, the right, the wrong, all judgments keep the mind dreaming, asleep and dreaming and, and having an amnesia, forgetting eternity. But as soon as you decide to allow the Holy Spirit and Jesus to use time just for the undoing of guilt, then until that point comes, then it's just like, uh, like a zombie, like the walking dead. <laughs> it's, it's like walking around completely asleep and, and thinking that you're in a real world of time and space, and it's all fiction, it's all fantasy. Now, what's so great about today's movie is, today's movie is going to show us in terms that we can relate to, that we have choices to make that are guided by the Holy Spirit, which are to let go of the past. And in this particular movie today, we will be addressing the following themes, which you all voted for. <laughs> you voted this week. The first theme we're going to address is nothing is personal. How to practice true empathy. Second one, all things work together for good without exception. Third one, Accepting that my willingness is my only contribution. And the fourth one, the Spirit's use of guided commitments in form. So when we look at what we would consider um, significant other relationships or, or partnerships as is defined in the world, all that these partnerships or these interpersonal relationships are about is they are temporary symbols, temporary assignments to learn to develop a sense of commitment. And anybody who's ever been in a relationship knows that one of the definitions of the interpersonal relationship is commitment. And that has a value to waking you up. Now, these are temporary assignments. None of them will last forever. <laughs> you 
you know, sometimes we wish in our love songs, I will love you forever. I will love you as long as the stars burn in the sky. Let me tell you, those, those stars have already burned out. They're, those burning gases that you're seeing is just light reaching your eyes, that, and they're long gone. Don't give me this, as long as the stars shine in the heaven, I will love you. That's not even romantic. If you study, if you know anything about science, I would say, is that all? Those, those stars are already gone. <laughs> those, those gases have already burned out and you're saying, I'll, I'll love you as long as the stars shine in the heaven. That's ridiculous. You have to realize that we are searching for a love that never ends because God is a love that never ends. That's what we're searching for in our love songs. Every love song we sing to a partner, we're really singing to God. You know, think about it. Would you sing an eternal love song to a slab of flesh that you are perceiving <laughs> that is here one day and gone the next, like the grass? You know, it, I, I, maybe I'm not too romantic today, but remember, I'm taking you down the rabbit hole. I'm, I'm trying to take you beyond this idea of looking for love in form, because that's the whole problem. Some of you might have read the, the course where Jesus says, God knows not form. That's right. All of history, history would not exist if you didn't keep making the same mistake in the present. That's right. I don't want to offend anybody, but Jesus didn't exist. Abraham didn't exist, Buddha didn't exist, except in a deluded mind that believed in form and believed in incarnation and reincarnation. But the whole teaching is you can't bring the truth into the illusion. Spirit never comes into time and space. Spirit never comes into flesh. Even Jesus corrects this in the Course when he says that it says the word was made flesh. He says, actually, that's impossible because what is eternal can never be brought into time and space, which is temporary. You need to bring all of your false beliefs to the light of truth and let them disappear because they're already gone. But as long as you keep believing they're still here, that's, that's the whole problem. So in this movie, what, what we're going to do is we're going to show a, a classic, like this movie is in our Movie Watcher's Guide to Enlightenment, and it is so helpful at releasing us from the belief in linear time. This movie is, it's like a scalpel in the hands of the Holy Spirit to use to free the mind from all beliefs in time and space. It's so good because it's a relationship movie. Why am I showing a relationship movie in an online retreat that's that is called Experiencing the Heart of God? You might say, what the hell are you doing showing a relationships movie in a, a retreat that's about experiencing the heart of God? Well, it's because Jesus knows that nowhere are we so deluded as we are with relationships, because we're projecting that soul sickness onto time and space, and we're trying to solve the soul sickness through an interpersonal relationship in time and space. Never going to happen. Absolutely will never happen. Hopefully, after with this today, you will never be interested in reincarnating again. <laughs> If given, given the choice, you'll say, ah, no thanks. I'll take eternal life. I'll take eternal life. Let the reincarnation drop away. So in this movie, this master filmmaker, Henry Jaglum has made, he's going to give us a scenario where he's going to show us there is a destiny beyond anything that we perceive. He's going to show us that in terms of relationships, he's going to bring four couples together in the same house in London. 
Okay. And, you know, it's always kind of interesting when you bring four couples together into a house. You know, that's, that's a good start right there. Because one of the couples are fiancé. You know, they are, they're engaged. One of the couples is engaged. Another of the couples has been married for many years. Another of the couples have been married for some years. And another one is kind of like a free spirit woman with a man that's trying to hang onto her coattails. <laughs> so that's the four couples. And he's gonna bring them together to show us that the one thing that we can do to reach God is prayer and guidance. Because if you believe that you're part of time and space, you believe you're in a far country that God doesn't know about and you need help out of the labyrinth. You, you need help out of the complex matrix of form and projection of separation. And the, and the way out is through guidance, through prayer and guidance. In fact, I will say that's the only way out. And it can be perceived in different cultures and in different uh, pathways in different ways. That's, that's for sure. But there's just one God and one guided spirit the Holy Spirit, which comes in by different names in different cultures and uses symbols. And in this movie, we're going to see that one of the, the engaged couple is going to be drawn together with a married man for the awakening. And some of you may say, God would never do that. Well, actually, I hate to disappoint you, but I'm going to share a little story from about my friend Judy Scutch Whitson. Some of you uh, know Judy Scutch Whitson was one of the original four of the Course in Miracles. And one time when I was having lunch with her and her husband, uh, Whit uh, William, she told me the story of how she had been married to a man named Bob, who actually is still living and he's part of the Foundation for Inner Peace. She was married to Bob. I think this is the funniest story I've ever heard, but this is from one of the original four from A Course in Miracles. She was married to Bob. She got a call from a speechwriter for the president of the United States, Milton Friedman, who was living in Washington, D.C. And Milton said, Judy, you have to come to Washington, D.C. Judy's living in Northern California with her husband, Bob. They're, they're working with A Course in Miracles even in this. So this is A Course in Miracle marriage with Bob and Judy. And then Milton Friedman says, you have to come to Washington, D.C. with his Southern accent. She tells me the whole story and she says, no, no, Milton, I'm, I'm not interested. I'm not coming. I've already been there recently. I'm not flying across the United States. This is not gonna be one of those when Harry met Sally moments across the States or, you know, it's where you have to try to fly to, to meet somebody. And Judy said, no, I'm not coming. And then Milton said, well, he's, he's a, a former general, he's involved in the government. And she said, now I know I'm not coming. Why would I, I'm not coming for that, for sure. And I'm not coming, I'm not coming. And then Milton says, he studies the Course in Miracles. Well, Judy's pretty open-minded. So she goes all the way across and she meets this guy, William. She's a married woman. She's a married woman. She's married to a dedicated Course in Miracles student. She flies all the way across the country. Her and William, they, they spend some time together. They just go to some events. And uh, she wasn't actually so thrilled about going, except her husband, Bob, said, you got to go. This sounds exciting. I would love to meet the guy. 
So she gets all this encouragement to fly across to Washington, D.C. to meet William. And then after they're spending time there together, and they've been to a few events for, for a few days, they're sitting together on a, a little, like a couch in a hotel. They both have different rooms in a hotel. Sounds like that movie Family Man or something. And they're sitting on the couch, and William, remember, she's not married to William. She's married to Bob. She's sitting next to William, and William says, Judy, I think we should pray. We should pray and ask the Holy Spirit, what is the purpose of our relationship? And Judy's telling me the story. She says, that's a good idea, William. I think we should pray. We should pray. And William says, good, good, let's pray. So they both pray on this little uh, couch and then they come out of the prayer and Judy's like, what did you hear? What did you hear? Uh, and William says, well, I heard that the purpose of our relationship is everything. She said, what did you say? He said, everything. That's the purpose of our relationship. And then he said, you are to, to be to me a, a confidant and a dear friend and a, a lover and a lifelong companion and a wife. <laughs> he, had, he gave her like 10 adjectives and she, and then she said, well, that is just about everything. <laughs> And then she thought, oh my God. So, so she flies back to Northern California now after this meeting with William. And she tells her husband, well, it was, it was okay. It was a good meeting and everything. He said, her husband, Bob says, tell me more. What happened? Tell me, tell me about William. I want to know all about William. And she's not, she's not too keen uh, on, on telling what happened. Uh, she's not keen at all on, on telling that. And, and he's all excited. And he's like, we should invite William to our house. And Judy's like, I don't actually think that's a really good idea. That's not a good idea. And he's like, oh, but I want to meet him. I want to meet him. I want to meet him. And she's like, I don't think so. So she's trying to be as hush hush as she can be because she's quite resistant to what's happening. And then... Finally, uh, her husband, Bob, prevails on her and says, just invite him to come out. Just at least invite him. So she invites William, and William flies out to their house in Northern California. And when, when William and Bob meet, it's like they've known each other forever. They're like best of friends, uh, this William and this Bob, Bob is her husband and William who's told her all those things. And now they're in the same house and they adore each other. They're like long lost brothers that have met and for the first, you know, they've re-met. So they're so exciting. So then she tells me one day after he'd been there a couple days, they're out and she's doing the dishes and they're outside of a screen door, screen window, so she can hear them talking. And they're, they're sitting together talking outside and she's listening in while they're talking and she's doing the dishes. And she hears them talking about sports. They're talking about sports and sports scores. So she's, you know, doing the dishes that typical men, they come together, they talk about sports and sports scores. And then in the middle of the sports talk, her husband, Bob, turns to William and says, what are your intentions with Judy? Now she's listening very intently because she's doing the dishes, but she's heard the question from Bob, her husband, to William. And William says, my intentions with Judy are I'm, I'm going to marry her. And then they went right on talking sports. She said, two men, 
and they say this and Judy's like, and they went right on talking sports. They just, that was the whole exchange that she heard. And then they go back to talking sports. Well, she was really stirred up now. Now she's stirred up. And she's so stirred up that, that basically when uh, William finally leaves to go back to Washington DC, Judy confronts Bob and says, don't think I don't know what's going on here. Don't think I don't, I heard, I, I listened. I heard what you said. Maybe you did it in your sports talk, but I heard exactly what you said. What do you got to say? What do you have to say? I heard what you said. And, and her husband smiled and said, I already told you this. And she said, what do you mean you already told me what? He said, you already know this about William because her husband, Bob, was so inspired by Jesus. He'd been writing and journaling. He was journaling in his own book, listening to Jesus and writing things. And what happened was Bob had written all these journals and he had actually showed Judy a journal in which Jesus told Bob, when William appears, let, let Judy go with William. They have an assignment. So Judy is shocked because Bob is saying, actually, I already showed you this journal. She said, you mean those ridiculous books? What are you talking about? He said, no, that's channeling. I'm channeling that. And I've already showed you this. You must have forgotten. You didn't even pay attention. You blew it off. But I actually already showed you when William appears, let Judy go with William. So I'm telling this story now because you're gonna need it when you watch this movie. This is the same thing. This whole movie is the same thing. You have to begin to realize that all relationships that you think you're personally in charge of who you're going to date, who you're going to marry, who's, your, who's going to be a friend with you. It's all part of a prearranged plan and the spirit is orchestrating everything in time and space for one purpose, to wake up, to remember God. There is no accidents. There is no unrequited love. There is no heartbreak of, oh, I was in love and then they died or my soulmate left me for another one. All the, the heartbreaks of human relationships are all just attempts to cling to the ego and avoid the light. And with Judy, I have to say, Jesus rearranged her relationships for the purpose of atonement and awakening. Because the three of them, Bob and Judy, and William remained friends, all working together to translate and distribute the Course in Miracles all over the world. In fact, it was just, a, I think maybe a couple, two or three years ago or something like that, where William passed away. He was in his 90s. Bob is currently in his 90s and Judy just turned 90. We're talking about this is, they're all, I mean, William's passed away now, but, but Bob and Judy are still in their 90s, and they all served the same purpose, thus undoing the belief that two's company and three's a crowd, not to Jesus. <laughs> Two is great, three, that's good too. <laughs> if it serves the Lord, three is just as good as two. And Bob had a prison ministry with Alcatraz. Bob brought A Course in Miracles into the prisons. He served on the board for years and years and years, along with Judy and along with Witt. And this is an example of you have to let Jesus orchestrate your relationships for the purpose of healing the mind. Don't try to tell Jesus of your heartbreaks thinking that something went wrong in form. Nothing ever goes wrong in form. 
It's our misperception of the body. It's our misperception of time. What do I mean by our misperception of time? Well, time is not linear. Time is actually simultaneous. You know, when people talk about other realms and parallel universes, it's all happening at one instant. And that's why when the sages tell you that the present moment is the closest approximation to eternity that this world offers, they're not joking. That's actually an accurate description of time. The present moment is the closest approximation of eternity that this world offers. And that means that when you make a decision, you have to make that decision based on the purpose in your mind. Will this decision bring me everlasting life? Will this decision reflect eternal values or will this decision reinforce my belief in the illusion of linear time? Every decision we make either strengthens the truth or it multiplies illusions. Every single decision without exception either strengthens the truth or it multiplies illusions. Now, why do I like this movie that I'm showing you today is because we are going to see that when you bring four couples together and, and one is engaged to be married, her name is Dana. Dana is engaged to be married to Alex. And in comes Sean who's a married man and he also is being called into a vibrational calling to let go of linear time. And when Dana and Sean come together, they're going to feel something that is so powerful and so deep that it's calling them to let go of this world. That's how the spirit works. The spirit's not interested in how long your interpersonal relationships are. You don't get any brownie points for long interpersonal relationships. I've often said, if I could have just one instant of complete connection with someone, anyone, I mean complete connection through the spirit, one instant of complete connection is way beyond years and years in time and space, because why? Because the ego invented linear time. The continuity is in the spirit. It's in the spirit of this moment, the spirit of love. And there is no continuity in linear time. Human beings search for continuity in linear time. Why do people want to find their soulmate why do people want to have a long-term loving relationship in linear time is because they're soul sick. They miss eternal life. They miss the eternal love of God. And it's important that we do stay open to who the Holy Spirit wants us to be with because that's part of our awakening process. Think of it for yourself. Do you want to be with people who are dedicated to forgiveness, focused on God, happy, joyful, loving, free-flowing, spontaneous? Do you want to be around those kind of people? It's really wonderful, but it's coming from inside of us. It's not the people that are bringing that, that kind of a relationship. It's it's our state of mind that draws forth that. It's not the people. People are thoughts. And when you tune into your spiritual connection, the people that seem to be you and those around you will reflect your spiritual connection. That's how it works. They don't produce your spiritual connection. That's between you and God. They reflect 
your spiritual connection. Last night we had so much fun, you know, you saw we had, we had singing, collaborative singing, we were laughing, Francis and Lisa and I, and we've been laughing for a lot of years. We've actually been laughing for many, many years. And it's very, very joyful. It's bursting joy. But it's what Jesus calls holy relationship. And what makes it holy is the present moment. What makes it holy is not having all kinds of expectations placed on the relationship, all kinds of past preferences placed on the relationship, all kinds of, of control and manipulation placed on the relationship from the ego. It's the joy of the moment. It's the joy of, of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of joy, and that's what inspires holy relationship. It's your purpose with the Holy Spirit. And that purpose is not to be invested in time. I mean, I sometimes seem so happy that I forget about time. I actually have, I forget what day it is. I don't criticize myself when I forget what day it is. I, I'm happy to not know what day it is. I can be as clueless as, can, as you could ever imagine and very happy in that cluelessness because of my connection to God, my connection to spirit. But it's not me looking for happiness in terms of some continuity in terms of form. So even with soulmates, the joy is the moment. It's the meeting in the moment. The vibrational connection in the moment is everything. And linear time is nothing. In this world, time seems to be important. But I'll tell you, time was not created by God. And only the Holy Spirit's use of time is important. And what is the Holy Spirit's use of time? The Holy Spirit uses time to teach you that there is no time. <laughs> what else could be a pathway to eternity? So I hope you enjoy this movie. I think this is one of the best movies for finding true freedom, true happiness, true joy, and you're going to see that by the end of this movie, that what you once believed was important about linear relationships was not the point at all. That's not the lesson. There is no continuity, as we read from Jesus in chapter 13, in finding the present section, there is no continuity between past and present and future. And the only way there seems to be this continuity between past, present, future is, Jesus says, when you force continuity onto them. It's a construct. It's like the cross. The vertical of the cross is the connection with God. The horizontal plane is the plane of linear time and space. Jesus was the intersection of the vertical plane with the horizontal plane. Jesus showed us what the I am presence means. Jesus is the definition of the Christ love of God. That's the vertical plane of the cross and the horizontal plane doesn't exist. Is, are there any special places on the planet? No. Are there any sacred sites? No. Do, they, do we have any sacred rivers? No. <laughs> Where are there any sacred people? Jesus was just a symbol, a symbol of the vertical. Jesus represents, it's a symbol, it's a reminder of the vertical. But in the end, there's two places in the course where Jesus says, forgive me your illusions. He was saying, forgive this long-haired guy <laughs> that seemed to exist 2,000 years ago, and accept the vertical with me right now. You are the living Christ and have always been 
a perfect, innocent child of God, accept the vertical, accept the atonement, accept the correction right now. And that's what our characters are going to do in this movie. So stay on your carpet today as we go down the rabbit hole. Do not try to get off of the carpet ride because you don't want to be tempted into time and space. Don't get tempted into the horizontal. If you find your mind rooting for certain couples or rooting for certain outcomes, get back onto the carpet. Pull your hands back onto the carpet. Do not root for certain couples to make it or certain couples to not make it. And I will give you commentary to show you the, how the Spirit of God uses the purpose of forgiveness to release time and space. So here we go. What a day. 